You might have heard about captives and thought, is this as good or as great as it sounds? This sounds way too good. Today, we'll explore captive insurance, its upsides, its downsides, and really crucial considerations to make sure captives are a good fit for your business. Hi, my name's Warren Cleveland with Renew Insurance Group, and I'm here to show you how to stop buying insurance. Today, we'll address the question, is captive insurance too good to be true? So captives can be as good as they sound if you have the right approach. And, and what I mean by that is, this is more, it, it's, yes, there's money, we're, we're financing risk, that's true, but the reality behind a good captive is really how the business owner and culture uh, advances risk management and safety. Um, if you don't have good risk management and safety programs, your captive is going to be a disaster. I mean, there's just no two ways about it because you are now taking a lot more risk on yourself. Um, so really the success of this idea of self-insurance or captives, it really depends on what business owners put into their own program, right? You you get out what you put into this. Uh, in, in, a, in as a captive owner. So the primary purpose of a captive is to insure your business, right? So that, that means you are gonna take some more risk on, uh, you know, as we said in the previous segment, the, the benefits, um, you know, and the drawbacks, we try and get both sides of this because it is a long-term strategy. This is not a get in, get out type thing. You know, if you've been buying insurance the same way uh, for the last 15 years, th this is a complete paradigm shift. So the idea that, you know, a, a well-managed positive experience versus one where you have a, a negative outcome is solely up to the business owner, the management, because you, you have to be committed to the idea that what you do every day in your business can affect the long-term success as a captive owner. So let's talk about the pitfalls of joining a captive. You know, obviously if you jump into a group captain, it's well run, uh, you know, a lot of providers, a lot of members, well established. Uh, you know, you have to kind of align with that culture, but that, that comes with a lot of responsibilities. And, and if you're just joining the captive, whether creating your own as a single parent or a group captive or cell captive for that matter, you know, th there are some responsibilities and administrative tasks of owning a captive uh, insurance company. I mean, you are owning your own insurance. So, you know, understanding what regulators are looking for or captive managers need in order to execute on, uh, on, on your captive idea, so to speak. Uh, you know, it's important to understand there are expenses that you have to undertake as part of captive ownership, collateral being a, a big one. Uh, collateral um, typically required of any fronting carrier um, or anybody who's gonna put credit risk on your captive. Uh, the idea that you have to have money set aside in case the thing goes bankrupt. And, and if you don't have the funds and the capital to deal with assessments for uh, you know excess claims outside of your loss fund, and I'm, I'm using some captive words here, so, uh, the, the idea is you need to have enough money to be able to deal with claims unexpectedly. Now, I've seen businesses jump into captives where they had capital and for whatever reason, the market turned and they were unable to continue to pay premiums. And the idea is this concept of captives is really more about uh, financing your risk. So. Compare that with traditional insurance where you're buying a, an insurance policy from a carrier, They're, you're transferring 100% of your risk to them and they are taking your premium and they're hoping to have more winners than losers. And when you go into a captive, you are now that carrier. So it's important whether you're in a group, a cell, single parent, uh, benefits, doesn't really matter. It's all, it's all kind of the same idea is that you have to have a well-managed uh, reserve, and you have to be willing to sit on the sidelines and watch your money grow uh, four, five, six years before this thing actually makes uh, it makes sense. You know, we know out of one out of five years, you're going to have a bad year. Uh, that's pretty typical in the industry that we see. Um, so you have to be prepared to kind of leave it alone and work on your business, risk management, training, all those things that make a profitable captive owner uh, successful. 
Okay, let's talk about five key considerations for business owners when you're thinking about captive insurance, right? So the first one I think is huge and every year you should know this, what's the maximum possible premium I could have to pay in a given year, right? So I had a bad year, um, I had a lot of losses, how much cash am I gonna have to come up with uh, in, in premium? That's super important. Now, number two, your loss history, your loss ratio, if you've heard it expressed that way. You know, the traditional insurance carrier, they monitor that stuff all the time. And as a business owner, you would also wanna see that because, you know, when it's renewal time, there's no boogeyman out there. You, you need to know your loss ratio because next year's renewal premium is gonna, base, gonna be based on those losses. You wanna manage that and see how, how well you're doing, right? It's a great indicator, barometer. Collateral, how much, so number three, how much do I need in collateral? And when would the captive need to call it? So collateral's there in case you can't afford to pay for your losses, you run out of money, collateral's there so the captive doesn't go bankrupt or the group doesn't share in your losses overly so. Make sense? The, the idea is that money's setting, it's a rainy day fund. Now, number four, how much risk is too much risk? So I've had captive owners, you know, love the idea, get in, work comp, GL, auto, and then decide, hey, what if we put our cyber policy in there? So we have a $5,000 premium on a million dollar limit. We are not gonna put that in a captive. It doesn't make any sense. It, you know, you, you're taking on too much risk for a million dollar limit for five grand. Uh, it, you, it's an easy way to bankrupt your captive. Now, number five is who manages this thing on a day-to-day -day basis? Now, typically that is a captive manager. And depending on the domicile, um, uh, you know, there's regulations about who that can be and, and what, you know, what's required of them. But that's the idea is that you've got a captive manager who, who is monitoring regulation, making sure compliance and so on and so forth, um, you know, asking for distributions, et cetera. But they're, they're really doing the grunt work. Okay, you were brought here today because you were wondering if captives were too good to be true. Now, captives aren't a viable option for every business. That's why you need to watch our video on whether captives are riskier than traditional insurance carriers. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to like and subscribe and make sure you leave a comment with any questions you might have. Your question could be the topic of our next video. And remember, stop buying insurance.